Hello and welcome to yoga featuring me, Melissa, and Pal and John John in the background there. So for today's class, you won't need any equipment except a mat, but if you do have yoga blocks, you might choose to use them. I don't have blocks, so I'm going to get some books to use instead. So bear with me while I grab my books. <laughs> All right, so again, you can use books, blocks if you need them. Today we have a book about Barbra Streisand and a book about Judy Garland. <laughs> so <laughs> those will be my blocks for today. So find a comfortable seat on your mat. Just settle into your hips. Place your hands on your knees, on your lap, or you can even feel free to place your hands on your belly or your heart here just to kind of find the breath, okay? When you're ready, just close your eyes and relax. Soften your jaw, soften your hips, your hands. Let your breathing slow down and deepen here. Take some deep inhalations, deep exhalations, not really forcing anything. Just finding your center here. Relaxing what you can relax. And once you've found that breath, a nice steady rhythm for it, open your eyes here. We're going to move with the breathing. Breathe in, roll your shoulders up towards your ears and breathe out, roll them down the back. Good. So let's do four of these here. Big shoulder rolls. And after four, we'll take it in the opposite direction. Again, slow it down. Inhale up toward the ears. Exhale down and forward. Inhale up, exhale down. Just really loosening up that shoulder girdle here. And we lower our right ear toward our right shoulder. Let's take that left arm and stretch it away from the body. Lift your head and we're going to cross the arm under the chin, gazing straight ahead or you can turn to look off of your shoulder, whichever feels best on your neck. Try to stay sitting up tall, and we'll take it to the other side, left ear to left shoulder, and we stretch our right arm away from the body, finding length through the side of the neck, breathing deeply. And we lift the head, cross the arm, looking ahead or turning to gaze off of your shoulder. Remember, it's always helpful in all of the poses to pick a still spot to focus your eyes on. Taking it back to center, lower the arm, great. All right, so I'm gonna to turn to the side so you can see you guys stay where you are. Hold on to your knees or take your arms in front of you. We're gonna lean forward, arching the back, pulling the shoulders back and sticking the chin and chest out. Good, let's find the exact opposite of that. Feel free to hold on to your knees, pull your belly button in, round through your spine, curve your hips under you, and we round through that spine, chin down. Good, so let's do this a little bit faster here with the breath. We inhale, arch forward, and exhale, round it back. Inhale, arch forward, exhale, round it back. Let's try two more of these here. Remember, go at your own pace. You don't have to match my pace. Beautiful, all right. So again, I'm gonna turn back. You guys just stay where you are. And from here, lift your arms up, but try to keep your shoulders down. All right, you know this by now. And your next exhale, we're gonna twist, opening the arms to one side, bringing the fingers toward the floor. Inhale, reach back for the ceiling, lift your rib cage up, and exhale, twist to the other side. And again, inhale, reach, lengthen the spine. Keep that length as you exhale and twist. Inhaling up, exhaling, opening those arms. Keep going here. Try to find as much length in your spine as you can, pulling up out of the hips. Keep breathing. Remember, we're matching the movement to the breath. And we can come back to the center and lower the arms. Great work so far. All right, so again, I'm gonna turn to the side. You stay where you are. This time we're gonna vary up that seated cat and cow by arching forward and then rolling through the spine, head coming up last. So let's try this here. Inhale, arch forward. Exhale, roll it up. Inhale, arch forward. Exhale, roll it up. Keep going. Try to really get into each vertebra. Good. All right. 
So still seated here, a few more things. Let's take our right hand to the floor, stretch our left arm overhead. Find that spot to focus your eyes on. You can look straight ahead of you or look up toward that arm, but try to lengthen through your neck. Good, and I think you know it's coming here. We're gonna sweep our arms in a moment. So moving with the breath. On your next breath out, take your chest toward the floor, reach your arms across. We're gonna hold it reaching to the side as we inhale, and then exhale, sweep it back. Inhale, gracefully lift through the center. And we're gonna exhale, taking our pose to the other side. Try to lengthen through your neck. Try to lengthen through both sides of your waist. Don't press too hard on that bottom hand. And moving with the breath. All right, so remember we exhale to sweep, inhale to hold it. So we're gonna inhale as we reach to the side. Exhale, reach it back. Inhale to lift exhale relax now last variation of this seated cat and cow so we're gonna take it the opposite of what we did before we're going to roll it down one vertebra at a time and once you come down we want to scoop through the chin and chest and arch ourselves up and come forward or up so let's try this again rolling down and arching up see if you can match it to the breath exhaling as you roll down inhaling as you come up good one more here Excellent, excellent work. All right, so join me in coming onto your hands and your knees here. Align your shoulders over your wrists. Feel free to take your hands into fists if that's more comfortable. And we're gonna take it to a cat and cow, inhaling as we arch our back and exhaling as we round through the back. And let's try this again. So as you inhale, lift your chin, lift your tailbone. And as you exhale, round through the middle of the spine, curling your chin and tailbone under. Good, try to get into that back, really stretch through the front of the belly on the in, on the exhale and pull the belly button up on the uh, exhale. <laughs> Beautiful, all right. From here, let's take it to a, <laughs> stepping the right foot forward and we're gonna come up into a lunge. So just a really basic lunge here, and I'm gonna use blocks or books here. You can feel free to put things under your hands or take your hands to your hips or just have the hands down. We want the shoulders basically aligned over the hips, and if you wanna take it up a little bit further, you can lift the arms overhead. Keep your shoulders down, and we lower those arms, beautiful. And coming back through tabletop, hands to the floor, step it back, and we'll go right to the other side. So stepping our left foot to the front, Find the alignment, shoulders over the hips, hands on the hips, down, or place them on your blocks. Remember to breathe. You want the knee right about over that ankle, no further for now. And if you wanna take it a little bit further, lift your arms, remember it's just an option. And we'll take those hands down and stepping it back to our tabletop position. All right, thread the needle. Right arm comes under the left arm, taking it down to the shoulder. You can stack the other arm on top or reach it up to the ceiling. Find that twist in the back, find that opening through the shoulders. And we lower that arm, untwisting. Back through tabletop, we'll go to the other side. Left arm threads through, we come down to the left shoulder. And again, either stack your right hand on top of it or we reach that right hand to the ceiling. Try to separate the shoulders here. Really reach that right hand up. We lower it down and untwist. From here, we are going to, back from tabletop, step the right foot forward again. And this time, take it further forward. So instead of right under the knee, now we want it a little bit further. Hands on the blocks if you'd like. You can tuck those back toes under, lift this back knee, lengthen through that back leg. All right, now feel free to stay here, or we lift our arms up. Again, shoulders over the hips, and we're in a crescent pose here. The back heel is off the floor. Think of shooting energy out of that back heel. Breathe, lower your hands. Let's take them down to the mat or to the blocks. Gently lower to your back knee. Take it back to the tabletop. We're gonna go to the other side, left foot forward, a little bit further than we did a little bit ago. Back toes tuck under, take that back knee off the floor. Find this pose, lengthen from the crown of your head out through your back heel. Feel free to stay here or take it up to crescent lunge, lifting those arms, sitting into the hips. 
So we're, the hips are square, we're sitting into the hips, you want that back knee a bit bent, but again, we're pressing out through that back heel, not taking it to the floor, keeping it off the floor. Hands come down, back knee to the ground, stepping it back. Good, let me move my, my blocks out of the way. From here, back to tabletop. Now, take your hands a few inches out in front of the shoulders, tuck your toes under, we're gonna find a half downward dog, peel your knees off the floor, Lift your hips to the sky. So we're trying to find a straight line from the wrist to the hips. So you're gonna to wanna to bend at the shoulders. Try not to let that happen. The knees are bent here. And when you're ready, we're gonna start bending and extending the knees, pushing one heel at a time toward the floor, but keeping that upper body strong. Press the floor away from yourself. Find that stretch in the back of your legs. Keep breathing. You've got this. When you're ready, press both heels toward the floor. They don't have to touch. Find your best downward dog. Good, and lower to your knees. And we're gonna untuck those toes, sitting it back to child's pose. Lengthen your arms in front of you, head toward the floor, hips toward your heels. And we're gonna take it back up again. Rearrange yourself so that those knees are back to under the hips. Take the hands out in front of the shoulders, toes under. We find our downward dog again. Lifting our right foot, we're gonna step it to the front, bring it right up between those hands. So if one step is too much, take a several smaller steps, whatever you need. You can even pick it up with your hand and place it there, all right? So once you've got those legs, we wanna line them up, one foot in front of the other. And we're gonna bend this right knee and lift up the arms. Again, sitting into the hips, but you'll notice now my back heel is on the floor. If that is too much for you, take your back heel off the floor and take it back to a crescent lunge. But if you wanna stay with me, we have our back heel pressing into the ground and the leg is a little bit straighter than it was in the crescent. Let's open to the side, finding a warrior two position. So our hips are nice and open toward the side of the mat, shoulders right over the hips, palms facing down. You can look towards your front hand, straight ahead of you, or towards your back hand. Find that still spot to look at though. All right, turn toward the front of the mat, cartwheel your hands down to either side of that right foot, step it back to your downward dog. Good, and if downward dog doesn't work for you, remember you can always take it to a tabletop position like we did at the beginning. So let's step that foot forward, one big step, several smaller steps, or pick it up with the foot, or with the hand. Lifting it up to our warrior one, or again, if warrior one is not in the cards for you today, taking it to a crescent pose. We still want this left knee nice and bent right over the ankle. Don't let it go past the knees or past the toes rather. Opening to the side, shooting energy through those arms. Let me turn so you can see. You guys, again, stay where you are. We want our front heel of the foot lined up with the back heel of the back arch of the foot. And we cartwheel the hands down to either side of this left foot, stepping it back to that downward dog or tabletop. From here, we're gonna take it all the way onto the belly, untucking the toes, lengthening the legs behind us. All right, so from here, take your hands and we're gonna place them. Let's see where I decide to place them. In front of ourselves, see? <laughs> Placing your elbows under your shoulders and just making sure that those legs are a comfortable distance apart. Think of lifting from the crown of your head, lengthen out of the base of the spine, lift the crown of your head, keeping the elbows on the floor, and once you are as high as you can, just hold it there. Imagine you have a light shining out from your heart. You're pressing your heart forward. Shine that light out, not on the floor, and if you wanna come up higher, take those elbows off the floor, and we're gonna take it down. Good work. Hands come under the shoulders, press into your hands and knees, take it to tabletop, and then if you want, tuck those toes under and take it to downward dog. Either way, we're gonna step <laughs> our foot forward. So right foot's gonna come to the front, finding a warrior one or crescent. And then from here, we're gonna open right into our warrior two. Once again, I'm gonna turn to the side so you can see, trying not to fall over here. Warrior two position, gazing toward our front hand. Turn your front hand to face the sky. We're gonna lean it back to a reverse warrior. So the legs stay where they are, but we're gonna arch our back, gazing up beyond that right elbow. Left hand just resting somewhere on the body. Think of pressing into both of your feet here. And then from there, we're gonna take our hands down to either side of our front foot, stepping it back to downward dog or our tabletop position. Either way is fine. 
left foot to the front rearrange your feet one in front of the other we start with our warrior one and we're going to open right to a warrior two feet are still lined up heel to arch okay <laughs> let me rearrange myself and we are going to stretch it back on this side reverse warrior so you want to think of lengthening through your left side as you breathe breathe into your rib cage on the left side and again we're grounding through the feet but lengthening through the waist exhale your hands to the floor we step it back and when you're ready, join me once again on the belly, untucking the toes, sending those legs long behind us. This time, take your hands behind you. You can clasp them together or keep them apart, up to you. I'm going to clasp them together here. Ground your hips into the floor, keeping the legs down on an inhale. Lift your chest off of the ground and exhale and hold it. Keep breathing here. Find length in the front and back of your body. Think especially of the neck. You don't want to be lifting the chin up or tucking it under. Keep breathing. When you're ready, release those hands. Take them back to under your shoulders. Tuck the toes under. Press into the hands and knees. Finding tabletop and or downward dog. Feel free to throw in a push-up if you want. All right, from here, stepping our right foot forward again. Feel free again to lift that leg. Take it to a three-legged dog and step it forward if you want. So this time we're going to take our back knee to the floor, untucking the toes if that feels better for your balance. I'm going to once again find my books here. All right. And stepping the foot a little bit forward here. This time I really just want you to find that stretch in the hip flexors, especially on that left side, pushing your hips down and forward a bit. We don't want the knee to go past the toes and come a little bit past the ankles. We're gonna take our left hand to the floor and reach our right arm up in a twist. And if you want, you can take that back heel off the floor. Stay where you are, I'm just turning so that you can see. We're twisting, and if you want, you can look up toward that hand, or if that doesn't feel great on your neck, gaze straight ahead of yourself. And take your hand <laughs> down. We're gonna extend through this right leg, hands on either side of the leg. So as you can see, I can get a pretty straight leg here, but I don't want you to think about actually straightening it. I want you to just go until you find the stretch through the back of your right leg. Bending the knee again, this time walk your foot out so the right edge of the foot is against the right edge of the mat. Take your hands to the inside. Feel free to come onto the elbows here. Feel free to twist to either side. This is one you can really play around with. As long as your knees don't hurt, just kind of wiggle into it. Just remember to keep breathing. And let's come back, bring the foot to the center and hands to either side of that foot. And we can step it back to tabletop. Feel free to throw in a push up even from your tabletop. Add on as you'd like. Or take it to a downward dog, take it to a push up, take it to a plank, whatever you want to add on through a whole chaturanga sequence if you feel like it. Again, you don't have to do any of that. We're going to. Again, take our left leg to the front. If you feel like it, take it to that three-legged downward dog to add on, but again, just an option. Step your left leg a little bit further forward than you think it should be, and then really sit into the hips. Yeah, find the stretch in the right hip flexors. Again, that back toe can be tucked under if that feels better for your balance. Feel free to put blocks under the hands here. We're gonna take our hands or our right hand down at least. And then when you're ready, find that twist, twisting through all parts of the back, lower back, middle back, upper back. And again, if your neck can handle it, take it to the neck as well by gazing up toward that top hand. But again, we don't wanna do anything too much on the neck. Take that hand down, one hand on either side of your leg. We're gonna extend through the knee here, taking the toes off of the floor. So again, blocks or not, we're going to extend this leg, taking our upper body, just kind of naturally folded over it. Don't worry about what your upper body is doing. Sending both hips back, try to square the hips as best you can here. Remember, don't overextend the knee. And let's bend the knee, take the foot to the floor, walk it over to the edge of your mat, hands to the inside, and then find your best pose here, or you can stay on the hands or come onto the elbows. Feel free to put blocks or books under the elbows, the hands, the forehead, the hips, wherever you want to use your props if you have them. 
when you're ready come back up we take that foot back to the center of the mat and the hands to either side of the foot and stepping it back to tabletop and or downward dog feeling free to add on as as you want but you don't have to if you don't want to but when you're ready we're going to come down all together onto the belly adding on to what we did a few minutes ago take your hands behind you apart or together thinking of lengthening through the spine we're going to lift both arms and legs now we're lifting the legs but i want you to think about pulling the legs backward here so i think i have a bit too much bend in my knees I, i'm gonna like extend them a bit here i think you can see it and we lower it down so again you do want to keep a bend in the knees but think about pulling the legs behind you when you do that pose taking it to your transitional pose and again you can do a three-legged dog or a three-legged tabletop here we're going to lift our right leg feel free to open it to the side if you want to open that hip now let's bend our right knee we pull it under the body turning it out to the side place the right shin on the floor in front of you i'm going to turn so you can see but you stay where you are our right leg is down. We're gonna send that left leg along behind. Try to square the hips. If you're leaning too much over to the right, feel free to put a block under that left hip. So find where you wanna put that um, right foot and then feel free to stay up on your hands. See again, I have to move so you can see. Or fold over that leg. Lengthen through your spine, relax your head and breathe. Let the hip open up, don't force anything. Again, you can use your blocks there, putting that under your forehead if that's comfortable. When you're ready, come up, and I want you to think about using the strength in your upper body to push the floor away from yourself and then rearranging to that strong downward dog or tabletop position. But when we take it to the other side, we're gonna do a three-legged tabletop or three-legged downward dog. Lift that left leg, feel free to open it for just a moment, but let's all bend that knee. Use the strength in your abs to pull it toward the front of your mat turning the left knee out to the left putting the shin down on the floor untuck your right leg send it long behind you readjust yourself again you can always put that block under your hip so we want it actually so paradoxically instead of if you're falling to the left you think you want to put the block under the right hip but no you want to put the block under the left hip so that the right hip can kind of fall down toward the floor and let the hips square a bit if you don't have blocks, please don't worry about it. Let gravity do its thing. And you can have that front foot closer to your body or a little bit further away. Again, use your hands to move it around and just kind of play around with it till you find your best stretch. Again, you can fold over as needed or stay up on those hands, but just find length in the spine. Find the breath. When you're ready, you can come back up again. We're gonna press the floor away, finding a tabletop, downward dog, whatever you wanna transition through. And again, feel free to add on. Do another chaturanga if you wanna add on. You don't have to. <laughs> Make the practice your own, but when you're ready, let's all come to a child's pose here. Let your back round out and breathe into that back. Relax. Great work so far. All right, so we're gonna come up here. Okay. Let us come to extending our right leg out. We're gonna take our left knee to the side. Let me turn so you can see. Left foot is in toward our right thigh. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna lift the arms here, keeping the shoulders down. I'm gonna just keep moving around. I'm sorry if it annoys you. <laughs> Don't round through your spine. We wanna lengthen through the spine, folding right from the creases in the hips, even if you can't fold that far. So arms up, leg nice and long. I want you to slowly, slowly fold from the hips. Once you feel it in the legs and you can't fold from the hips anymore, then take your hands down. You can hold on to your foot or something wrapped around your foot or the floor and then from there if you want to just relax let the head go and let the back round a little bit feel free to do that but don't push yourself too far let's walk it back up so the legs are going to stay where they are but we're going to turn so that we are sideways arms come out shoulders are down we want to lengthen through both sides of the waist here not just crunch into the side lengthen both sides think of reaching above that foot 
hold on to the foot, the ankle, wherever you can hold on to, and we take our other arm up, lengthening it overhead. Good, so you can look up toward that, or toward the ceiling under the arm if you'd like. Um, whatever helps lengthen your neck here, you can gaze toward me or even toward the floor, but keep a nice long neck, a nice open chest. Coming back up, beautiful work. Take your feet together, knees apart. Now we don't want them super close to the body. We want them a little bit further away. Okay, again, folding right from the hips. Hold on to the ankles and let's fold here. Once you find that stretch in the legs, again, once you find it, then feel free to drop your head and let your back round, finding that bit of extra stretch here. Again, this is my deepest stretch. Your stretch doesn't have to come down far at all. It's not about like what it looks like. It's about the sensation in those legs. So let's take it to the other side. All right, so our leg stretches out, left leg out, think of folding from the hips. We reach our arms, fold slowly so you feel it in the leg. Once you find it in the leg, then you take those hands down, holding onto the floor, the foot, something around the foot or the leg. Find your edge, find your deepest stretch where it's not hurting, but you feel a bit of a discomfort. Feel free to keep a straight back or around the back here, but keep your spine long. Remember to breathe. Lengthening back up and keeping that leg nice and long. We're gonna stretch our arms out to the side. So again, lengthening through both sides of the waist here is what we wanna think about. Length over the leg, hold on to the foot or ankle and stretching the other arm overhead. Keep that chest open and the neck nice and long, finding that still spot to focus your eyes on. You're doing great, guys. And let's come back up. Wonderful, wonderful work. All right, so we are going to take it from here onto our back. And this is the part where I tell you to start making yourself comfortable. So I'm at home, so I have a pillow nearby. I'm going to use a pillow. Um, I'm just going to keep it within distance so that we can use it for our Shavasana. We're not quite there yet. Let's come down to our mat. Make sure you have enough room to fully extend your legs. From here, bend both of your knees, hug them into your chest, and relax your back into the floor. Keep breathing deeply. From here, extend your left leg out, keeping the right knee bent. We're going to find a nice twist. Use the left hand to just guide the leg across your body. See, I like to hook the foot behind the other leg, but you can always cross the whole foot over. Try to keep both shoulders on the floor. That um, right shoulder is gonna wanna lift. You wanna keep it on the ground. Remember, my, my knee can touch the floor, but it took me a while to get there. So you can always put blocks under the knee here if you'd like, or just kinda let it fall toward the floor, let gravity do its thing. Taking it back to the center, we keep that other leg extended. Extend your right leg, cross the ankles, right ankle on top of left ankle. Arms come overhead, either hold your elbows or lengthening through the arms, we hold onto our right wrist with the left hand. Make a banana with your body here, stretching arms and legs over to the left so that the right side lengthens out. Once again, try to keep the right shoulder and the right hip on the floor if you can. Breathe, find that stretch. I find that flexing the bottom foot really helps me get into that right hip as well. Taking it back to the center, let's bend both knees, hugging them into the chest. Good work, maybe give yourself a little rock from side to side, just let that back really relax. Take hold of your ankles, your feet, or your big toes, or even just your knees here, but hold on to those legs. Let's open the knees here. Finding happy baby pose and always happy to oblige. I'm going to show you this awkward position, what this pose looks like. Feel free to add movement to this, okay? So you can always extend your knees, rock yourself side to side, roll your ankles here, whatever makes you feel good in this position. Good, all right, so let's send those knees back together. Keep the floor, keep the back relaxed into the floor. Extending the right leg out, we cross the left knee over, finding that twist through the back. Again, taking the knee as far over as is comfortable, but trying to keep the left shoulder on the ground. And again, you can always take the twist to the 
top of your spine by turning your neck as well. But I know some of us have neck issues, so you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Let's find banana pose, left foot over right foot. Again, bend your elbows, hold the elbows, or we hold on to that left hand. Think of lengthening through the whole body here. And we stretch arms and legs to the right, breathing here, finding that length through the left side of the body, trying to keep that left hip down. Again, maybe flex that right foot. You should hopefully feel it in that left hip. Feel it in the whole left side of the body, hopefully. Wonderful, wonderful work. Bend your knees in again, relax. Again, maybe give yourself a little rock from side to side. And we've made it to our Shavasana. So make yourself comfortable. I'm gonna put this pillow under my head, but if you have a pillow or something, a bolster or something, put it under your knees, put it under your low back. Whatever's gonna make you comfy here, feel free to grab a blanket or put a sweatshirt on. And let's lie down on the back. All right, so traditionally we extend our arms and legs, but if you need to bend the knees or you know find a different position, do that here. When you're ready, close your eyes and settle your body into the floor. Take a deep inhale through your nose and a deep exhale through your mouth. And again, a deep inhale to the tips of your fingers and toes and a deep exhale through your mouth. One more time, deep inhale through the nose, deep exhale through the mouth. And then just let it go, breathe naturally, whatever that means for you, don't worry about the breath. As you just relax here, I want you to really give yourself permission to relax. Notice how your body is feeling. Notice if you're holding tension in your head. Let your head feel heavy against the floor or your pillow here. Unscrunch your forehead and relax the inner and outer corners of your eyes and the space between your brows. Relax the corners of your mouth. Relax your tongue and your throat. Maybe swallow to let the throat relax. Unclench your jaw. Soften the sides of your neck. And send that softening feeling down into your shoulders. Let the shoulders relax. Let your upper arms and your elbows relax into the floor. Relaxing it down through forearms, wrists, hands, and fingers. Notice again how the center of your body is doing. Soften your heart. Let your upper back and your middle back melt into your floor as your rib cage relaxes. Notice if you're holding any tension in your belly or your lower back and just consciously let it go. Remember, you might not let it go all at once. It doesn't have to happen all at once. Just give your body permission to relax. Notice if you're holding tension in your hips and give those hips permission to relax. Settle them into the floor. From there, relax your thighs, top of your thighs, bottom of your thighs, inner and outer thighs. Soften your knees, your shins, your calves. Relax your ankles, your feet, your toes. Let your whole body relax here. start to deepen here. Deep inhale in through the nose. Deep exhale out through the mouth. Deep inhale in through the nose. Deep exhale through the mouth. On your next inhale, start to wiggle your fingers and toes. As you exhale through your mouth, open your eyes. Beautiful job, guys. Bend your knees and nice and slowly. Let's roll to one side. Take a moment here, keep yourself relaxed, let go of all that tension. Say a silent thank you to your body for all that it is capable of. Let's slowly come up to a comfortable seated position, ending where we began. Thank you so much for practicing with me today, guys. You've done wonderful, let's do one deep inhale and let it go. Namaste.